Peter here, aka Peter Freak Out 10, bringing you guys another episode of the Movie Review Show, where the good movies are always reviewed. Okay, back into our movie review, and I'll continue with the summer movie reviews, baby. Hell yes. All right. Now, on today's episode, today's film is one that I've been pumped to watch and talk about since the winter. I saw the teaser for this film in the winter, and I was going to review it around then, but unfortunately didn't get around to it, so I figured why not review it for the summer, and here we are. And why am I so pumped to basically watch this film, or why was I so pumped to review this film? Well, this is based on a Marvel character that, while I have no knowledge about, I just know about the background and whatnot, um, I thought it looked like an interesting idea to do a movie around because even though like I don't know about the character this will be a good way for me to get insight on him even though I have read some on the net well just a little bit more background about him and maybe get more involved with the character and who is that you may ask? well let me just start by saying this is a character that has left a cultural impact on Marvel people I mean, I said Spider-Man too, but um, this guy, whenever you think of Marvel, this is the guy that pops in your head. Granted, there are so many other characters, but whenever anybody talks about Marvel, it's this guy. Who is that, you may ask? Well, let me give you some clues. He's big, he's green, he's monstrous, you wouldn't like him when he's mad, he roars, and he's a scientist. It is the Hulk. Now, for those who don't know who the Hulk is, and you say you're a comic book fan, the Hulk was a character created in 1962 by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby after leaving Atomic Comics and forming Marvel. And it made its first appearance in the Incredible Hulk comic in May of 1962. And the character has since then become a huge phenomenon for Marvel and is remembered by every comic book lover. Now, in 1970, he got his first step into, like, um, the, well, I don't want to say motion pictures because it was a TV show, but he got his first step into the world of entertainment on TV with uh, The Incredible Hulk with, uh, what's his name, uh, Bill Bigsby and Lou Ferrigno. And since then, nobody has thought to do a movie around him, probably because they didn't think comic book movies would do well. However, that all changed in 1989 when Batman struck gold and pretty much became one of the highest grossing uh, comic book movies of all time. And because of that, so many people wanted to bring their comic book characters to the big screen. So since then, we have shown like what we can do with comic book films. Spawn did it well. I mean, a lot of people disagree with me. Blade did it well. Um, X-Men did it well. Judge Dredd did it well. Tank Girl did it well. Um, those few films, I know a lot of people hate, but I love them, but The Crow did it well, um, Spider-Man, of course, did it great, um, X-Men, of course, so the idea to bring the Hulk to the big screen is an interesting idea, however, the production was troublesome. Because they originally had this idea with a different director that um, it was going to be more like an action film. However, Universal halted the production of the film because it was too expensive. And since then, that production just shat on the shelf uh, collecting dust. That wasn't until another director came in. One who we scratched our heads towards who had did a great film, but it was unclear whether he would do a good job with this film, considering the fact that it was completely out of his league. Enter Ang Lee. While a very good director, it's easy to see with Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon that this is not his style. It is literally not his style. And we scratched our heads at that, like, why would you choose him? But we were getting our Hulk movie, so we weren't um, completely mad about it. That is unless he did a good job. And that teaser for this film, like which came out uh, during Spider-Man, um, I always liked uh, that teaser with uh, Bruce Banner looking in the mirror and, it's, and him like talking to himself and saying, When it comes over me, I like it. And then he, he smashes through the wall and it says Hulk and then coming soon and whatnot. That teaser got me pumped. And the marketing for this film, I think, also heightened my excitement. Like, 
uh, the advertisements that the film had, um, also the the Hulk hands that this film made for the film, and even the game, which I have right here. I'm going to hold this up as I review, which I'll review sometime in the future um, on video game time. But um, the game, uh, which served more as a sequel to the movie, which was surprising that they did that, not having you play through the movie. But... Um, there was also that Mountain Dew commercial, which I saw on Adult Swim. Um, I always liked that commercial with uh, him and anger management, and he steps up and he explains, well, I get angry when I get into trouble. Trouble? I break stuff. And one guy spills his Mountain Dew, and he gets mad and throws stuff at the wall and becomes the Hulk, and it's like, obviously we have more work to do. And punches through, and it says, go the Dew. So... So the marketing for this film was huge. Everybody was hyped about this film. Um, um, also the Super Bowl commercial or trailer that they had for the film also hyped me up. And the film came out, um, and let me just check the thing. The film came out, and, and, um, and with a budget of $137 million, on its opening weekend, it made... It made sixty two point one million, and when the second weekend came around, whew, it made a seventy percent drop, and it was the first opener above twenty million to drop over sixty five percent. Wow. However, critical reception is very in the middle. It definitely is very in the middle. But I was not willing to let that ruin this uh, film for me. I wanted to see it for myself. Because as I said, I go into films with open minds. Whether it's um, a person doing a review or, a, or just anybody else talking about the film, I like to go in open mind. I don't listen to the newspapers. So, after waiting, I, what do I have to say? I don't hate the movie. I really don't. It could have been so much better, though. It really could have been so much better. I'm sorry. I hate to say that. But this film was just so disappointing. I cannot believe how disappointed I was. I don't... Is it as bad as, say, a guy thing? No. Um, is it as bad as, say... Um, any other film that anybody hates, like um, like the new guy, which I hate, no. Is it as bad as Killjoy? No. Is it as bad as Steel? No. Is it as bad as Batman and Robin? No. Do I think Daredevil's much better? Yeah. Oh my god. I just felt this film could have been so much better, and... It is this problem with this film that I think is easy to see through the director. And as I said in the opening, I think it was definitely easy to get worried about it. And I think it was worth it getting worried about it because it led to this. And it's obvious that, as someone else said, Ang Lee was the wrong choice to make this film. And when you read like the production, you watch like the behind the scenes and whatnot, and even on the game, you can see that... I don't want to say he didn't know what he was doing, but I don't think he knew what direction to take with this film. But I'll get into that later. But um, Stan Lee executive produced this film um, as well. Um, and this had four people producing it. Um, but yeah, Stan Lee produced it, as I said, and it stars uh, Eric Bana. Who um, came? Who was also in uh, Finding Nemo? Um, he was in Chopper. I don't know what else he's in. Um, he was in The Castle, Black Hawk Down, The Nugget. Um, so yeah, he was the anchor in Finding Nemo. Um, you also have Jennifer Conley, who um, was around in the nineties, I think. Um, she served as the inspiration for Jasmine. Um, Once Upon a Time in America, Phenomena. I don't know that. Seven Minutes in Heaven, Labyrinth, Some Girls, Etola, The Hot Spot, Career Opportunities, definitely remember for that. Rock, The Rocketeer, among many others. Um, you also have some good actors in here. Sam Elliott, uh, 
I remember him from The Big Lebowski. Um, I remember him from uh, Tombstone. Um, he was also in um, Fatal Beauty, um, uh, Dog Watch, um, Pretty When You Cry, and We Were Soldiers. So definitely a good actor. Um, Nick Nolte from Cape Fear is here too. Josh Lucas, who I don't know anything about. Um, and a bunch of other people. Jesse Cortez is in this film? Wow, Jesse Cortai's here? Yeah, Jesse Cortai. Who did Lee Phone, Beauty and the Beast? He has a quick part as one of the people in it, the Colonel. Um, Lou Ferrigno has a cameo. Uh, Stan Lee had a cameo too. Um, Daniel Day Kim has, has a small role here too. Which I'm like, Daniel Day Kim's here? Wow. Um, from that uh, movie, The Jackal, which I haven't seen with uh, Bruce Willis. Yeah, but the cast isn't the worst thing, but this film, it just has so much problems, and it, I'm probably going to make, I'm not going to make this video half an hour where examining the problems, going through it like a microscope like uh, another person did, uh, OCP Communications, Matt, but I'm just going to say what I think, but what's the plot of this film? Basically, we meet uh, David Banner, is that his yeah, David Banner, played by Nick Nolte, who's a scientist um, working on the serum that will basically regenerate human tissue. And he wants to do it on the soldiers, but they said no to that because it's too dangerous, it's too risky. So he does it on himself and accidentally passes it down to his son. And later on, pretty much, the military gets word of this and basically blows up the facility and heads back home to basically murder uh, his son, but accidentally kills his wife. Since then, um, Bruce, whatever his name is, because he has a different character, he has um, a different last name, Bruce, uh, played by Eric Bana, has grown up in foster care, unaware of what happened in his childhood, and he's recently broken up with his girlfriend, uh, Betty, played by um, Jennifer Conley, and basically, um, basically, um, he's working on this experiment, basically doing the same thing as dad was doing. And, uh, pretty much, um, one day an accident happens and the nanomeds get into him, therefore, uh, getting, um, basically pushing the, uh, serum that he had in him out and basically turning him into the Hulk. And basically, um, we see him at one point destroy a lab, and out of nowhere, his dad, who has been working as a janitor in, this, in the lab he worked at, basically comes in and basically tries to take the experiment for himself, all the while uh, General Thunderbolt Ross, um, Betty's father, played by Sam Elliott, basically gets word of this and basically tries to take him down. Um, so now Bruce is going to have to contain his anger and basically find a way to basically take down his dad and show him that he needs to keep the experiment or maybe if he's lucky, find a cure. Will Bruce be able to keep his anger un under control and find a cure or what's the best I can say? Or will the military shoot him down? before they can help him. <sighs> All right. There's some stuff I do like. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice sounds rough, but there's some stuff I do like. Um, for one thing, I understand the angle that Angley was trying to go with. When you look at um, the production, you see that he really wanted the film to be... What's the word? He really wanted it to be this kind of, oh my god, what am I kind of movie where the character looks at the water and is like, what am I? Like, how do I control me? What did you do to me? Kind of film. Almost a little bit of the vein of Frankenstein. And while that works with the film, he angrily oversaturates it in this movie. He literally kind, He literally just feels like, yeah, we're going to have the Hulk in there, but we're going to make this huge character study about it, which is not needed. It didn't need to be oversaturated with this 
whole study on Bruce and the scenes with him going forward with the experiment and him trying to control himself, it didn't need to do that. It literally didn't need to do that. If if it was going to do that, fine. But don't oversaturate it in that. And that's the thing that I don't think Ang Lee understood when he was directing it, is that people already know the character of Bruce. And while that there's some coming in it, don't oversaturate it to the point where we feel like we're hearing too much about him and really studying him too much. And that's the problem with this movie. He wastes... So the screenplay wastes too much time on the Bruce character and those scenes that you get from him, you don't know Lick. You literally don't know Lick about him. Only that his dad murdered his mother and that he works in a science lab and that and that when he does become the Hulk, like you're like, finally. Now, while I understand that, the emotion is there. I can definitely say that the emotion is there. It's not completely gone out of the film. It's just too... It's just there too much. It hangs out like a sore thumb. And this movie is over two hours. So for two hours, you have to wait till the Hulk transforms. And he only transforms three or four times in this movie. Four times out of a two-hour movie. How do you do that? But, yeah... I'm not saying it was a bad idea to do this angle. It literally wasn't a bad idea. It's just too there too much. And if you like this angle, that's fine. I can definitely understand why. It's just for me, I just wish Ang Lee balanced it more. Heck, I with the other script, like it, it felt like more of a comic book action movie. It definitely felt like more of a comic book action movie. But I dare think that there still would have been that. I dare think there still would have been that genre. With the drama and whatnot. But it just doesn't work. It really doesn't work when it's so in line with being this character study. And you focus way too much on the character of Bruce being human and trying to control himself. And not enough on the Hulk himself. And even the other characters, which you learn very little about. But I will say, Ang Lee does film the film well. He does film the film well. It's shot really well. Minus the editing, which I'll get to. Um, it's shot really well. The scenes are really well done. I like the opening so score with Danny Elfman when you see um, his father working on the experiment. I like how it's shot. Um, I do like the when uh, the title cards are going by and you see, like, um, I don't know if it's water or what's in this beaker. You see uh, the... You see um, it through, like, the glass, and it's, like, enlarged one of the letters. That I found unique, and that works with the film. But that brings up another problem with the movie, because as you go through the film, Ang Lee, for some reason, wanted this to feel like a comic book. So he put these comic book panel-style editing in the film. And to me, personally, it got annoying. And at times, I, find, I found myself getting a headache with the movie. The scenes that went by, like, the scenes that come in, like, say one person's talking here and one person's talking there. Now, that works when you're doing, like, a phone conversation, but it doesn't work when, uh, like, one person's in the room there. Some of them are well done, like, um, the final fight with the cloud in the clouds. That scene I thought was really well done. Or even, like, the, the pull-out shots, like, the quick pull-outs. I thought those were really cool, but... Um, some, a lot of them just feel too there, too much there. It just feels like, it just feels like, you know, he was like, let me get some pretty pictures in there and get, and go overboard with it. I could deal with it for the first few minutes. It just, at times it got annoying. It really got annoying. Um, at times I found myself getting a headache. Um, and sometimes it just cuts the flow of some of the action scenes. Which, the action scenes are also really well filmed, minus those shots. But yeah, there's some good in the drama, there's some good in the editing and the camera angles. It's just, Ang Lee, I don't think, knew what he was doing. And I think that, and maybe it would have worked better if they got someone who, if they got someone who's written Marvel movies before to help him. And I mean... 
I know this AV Arad guy. Um, this guy. Um, yeah, this guy wrote Spider Man. What the? Actually, no, that was someone else that did it. But didn't he have a hand in it or something? I don't, know, I don't know. I didn't see it, but yeah, maybe it would have worked better if they got someone else instead of hiring someone um, there who he's worked with before. Um, yeah, James Sheamus. Um, let me just check. Does he work with him? Yeah, he wrote Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. That's the problem is that he's surrounding himself with people that he's worked with before, but they don't make the film, but it doesn't feel like they're making the movie that everybody wants to see. And while the drama works at times, he, go, he just puts it over like all that we want to see. And I think that the editing um, also kind of shows that too. While it w works with a comic book, it really just feels forced and unnatural in some scenes. And it ruins the flow. Now, moving on. The acting in this film, I think, is well done. Eric Bana, who at first I was kind of like, eh, with some of his acting, even when he has to get mad and whatnot... At times, it does feel like he's forcing it, and I don't want to say it, he's doing a completely horrible job, because at times, he does come across natural. I do like that scene where he's remembering, like, the dream, or him becoming the Hulk, and he thinks it's a dream, and he's like, I had this dream, and it was my heart pounding. My heart was pounding like... It was like being born again. Like, that, those scenes I like, where he's contemplating all that, and even the scenes where, uh, even afterwards, where you do see, after he has that one fight scene, which I'll get to, and he's like, um, he's, and yeah, see, like, some of the Hulk is still in him as a human. Those scenes I like. It's just at times, it feels like he hasn't got much to work with. He hasn't got much to move the character along and really expand him more. Yeah, that's, to me, the problem with him. But, he does what he can. He really does what he can. And also, um, Betty, played by Jennifer Conley. Jennifer Conley did good. I like Jennifer Conley's character in the film. I thought she was likable. Um, the scenes with her and Bruce interacting, I thought were really well done. Um, I do feel the chemistry was lacking, though. That's something, that's another problem that I did have. I know I'm just picking by, but... I do feel their chemistry was lacking a bit because um, as the film goes along and he becomes the Hulk, it doesn't feel like they share much. I mean, Granny, you do have a couple scenes of the two, but it really just feels like they went along, very, they just moved it too slowly, their relationship, and it just didn't amount to anything. It literally just was like, yeah, I'm the Hulk, and just she takes him in and tries to help him. Her performance is fine. Her performance is fine. Um... It was a bad. If it was a bad performance, I'd say otherwise. But it's not a bad performance. She does what he can. She can. I think Eric Bana does too. I just feel like you know they don't have much to work with, and the movie doesn't really focus on their relationship that much. So yeah. Um, I do like uh, Sam Elliott as General Thunderbolt Ross. I thought he did a good job. Um, the scenes where um, he has to be this stern general. I thought he did it really well. Um, anything with Sam Elliott is gold. And Sam Elliott, I thought, did a good job. Uh, he looks the part. He has the... Um, whenever I see the character in the comics, even though I don't read much of the comics, I've seen pictures of it. Um, whenever I see his face, I can think Sam Elliott. I hear his voice. Like, when he talks, I immediately think Sam Elliott. That's how well um, he puts himself in this role and the face, the mustache. I thought he did it really well. He definitely brings uh, the character to life. Um, Josh Lucas also does a good job. Um, um, is he a character in the comics? Again, I don't know. Terrible. Oh yeah, they, cha they changed him in the movie. They really changed him in the movie.
they really changed him in the movie. So yeah. Um, but he played a good jerk. He's like this guy who works for this other company that they're competing with. Um, you have scenes of him kind of like messing with Betty and whatnot. Um, um, flirting with him, beating up Bruce, which is like where he has his Hulk out and whatnot. Um, and he does it fine. He does it fine. And you're, you're happy when you see him get killed, even though he dies in the most cartoonish way because when he gets blown up, you see him, he's like this. He's got a cardboard. He looks like a piece of mach paper mache or cardboard or whatever you want to call it. And it's laughable. And that's another thing with the editing, too. I, it's a good idea for a scene. It really is a good idea for an edit, but how they made it look, I thought it looked it looked bad. But, yeah. Um, Nick Nolte, I know a lot of people complain about Nick Nolte, at times he overacts, and I can see that. I thought he did a good job, though. He was definitely a creepy character. Um, he's definitely, uh, the few scenes with him, you definitely get this kind of, like, weirdness about him, like, with the beard and the, and the long hair. You get an idea that somehow he's connected to Bruce. I mean, even though they try to make it this mystery, you know it right away because he's got pictures on his billboard of him and he says, my son. And after that, they still try to make it this mystery even though they only revealed it to you, which I know that's something that, um, that I noticed even though I'm not trying to pick apart the movie piece by piece. It's not, a, I'm not saying this is a rant. It just, at the same time, it just feels like a missed opportunity, this movie. It really does. Um, but Nick Nolte, he has, like, he has this really kind of creepy, kind of, like, <laughs> kind of pushy, kind of, like, um, crazy side to him in the film that I think he pulled off well. Um, this, even, like, the scene where they bring him in to talk to Bruce, like, when he goes over the top and he's trying to explain, like, why the serum is going to be used for good, um you can see how crazy he is, and Nick Nolte, I think, does fine. Nick Nolte, I think, did a really good job. So, yeah. Definitely brings, uh, I don't know if this is a real character in the comic. Again, I don't read the comic that much. I'm, but, um, definitely brings, um, a good character to the screen, and definitely, definitely it's good to see him as this sort of villain, because I think he does it really well. I love Cape Fear, and I think here he does it really well, too. Um, so, yeah, I think the acting's well done. Um, it's just some of them aren't giving... Some of them just feel like they're really, really struggling with what they have to go by. It feels like there could be more to some of the characters. And it hurts the film so much because it really just... You're waiting for the action scene. You're just sitting there trying to get by to an action scene, and you learn nothing as the action scenes happen. You're sitting there like, oh, like, this is cool, but, but you know, after that you're going back, and I'm like, I didn't learn anything. I want a more action. So, yeah, this character study idea that Ang Lee decided to use was not worth it. I don't know what made him think, like, yeah, the Hulk has this emotional side, but it's not this character dramatity drama uh, with this monster movie elements that he made it out that he makes it out to be because he's comparing it to Frankenstein which I know that's where Stanley got the inspiration for it but he but it's not completely Frankenstein that's what he misses yeah however I have said some good but where there's definitely a lot of good in this part. Um, when the film does get to the action, it's definitely really well done. The CGI on the Hulk, I think, looks really well done. Um, Ang Lee himself did the motion caption. I think it looks really good. The first Hulk out in the lab where he destroys it. I know that there were some practical effects, and they're very good practical effects. Um, the CGI itself, I think, is really good. The face on the Hulk, I think, is really well done. Um... Especially the scene after it, which I know a lot of people complain about the scene with the Hulk dogs. I thought it was a cool scene, and the Hulk dogs, I think, were really well done. Um, I like their design, um, because if you guys don't know this scene, it's basically he mutated his dogs, um, um, David, uh, to basically go and attack his girlfriend. They're like these big mutated things with, one of them has her mouth like this, like like that and like they're barking at him and 
I thought they looked really well done. Ang Lee Sun designed them, and I thought he did a really good job. And the scene, I think, works well. Um, um, the effects, for the most part, I think are really well done. Um, I do like the scene where he, where one of them bites his neck and he breaks it, punches one of them in the in in the penis, I should say, and they turn into dust. And the action is there, especially like the desert scene and. And it's very well done, very good effects, and especially like Nick Nolte's character, what he becomes, which is basically a combination of the leader, the absorbing man, and another villain, which I forget. Um, what is that other villain? I don't know, I, I don't really care, but... The, it looks good, especially that one part where um, he's in the lab and he's, his hand turns into metal and even the one part where his hand becomes that red stuff and his hand gets cut and the blood's like this. The CGI, I think, is really well done in this film. And But, the, but for the most part, you're getting like this really social kind of commentary on Bruce, this character study that really is not needed and you're trying to strut by it and when the action does happen, you're yearning for more and there's only four scenes of the Hulk. And that was the biggest mistake that this film made and is making it this social commentary when it wasn't needed and making the Hulk only four Hulk outs. Yeah. And the... And the ending. The ending, I think, wasn't needed. You didn't need to do it that way. Um, I think it could have been a lot better. It could have been better done. could have been better written. Yeah. The ending, I won't spoil it for those who haven't seen it. It just, it could have been a lot better. If they're trying to sequel bait it, just please fix the freaking problems with your next film. <sighs> okay. Now... I don't hate this movie. I've said a lot of I've said some good stuff. I like the action. I like the performances. It's just Angley I think was the wrong choice. Um some of the characters don't have emotion. The idea that he wanted to go with a social commentary instead of making an all-out action movie which Roger Ebert I know he said he liked that angle that was more mature and that the Hulk that this whole thing was a curse, but it didn't. It just could have been done better. And I think if they were gonna go that angle, at least appease to some of the fans who at least love the character and want to go see Hulk smashing. And when you do see that, you just you have to sit through more and more of the social stuff, which is not needed. Well, it can be needed if you do it well. And this film does it well, but it's done well too much. But overall. I don't want to say I hate the film. It's just, I was very disappointed with this movie. I felt it could have been so much better. And just all that was advertised, all the marketing that this film pulled in, even that teaser, which I thought looked awesome, really just, I really felt was for nothing. I really felt was for nothing. And even the game, the game, I had more fun playing. I definitely think that the game is definitely much better. I'm going to say that right now. I might do a review on this game in the future, but the game itself, I think, is a lot of fun. Definitely better than the movie. But no. Do I hate the film with a burning passion? No. I was just very disappointed by it and felt it could have offered me a lot more. So, either way, um, I'd wait. I just rented. Um, afterwards. I don't want to say um, don't go see it because there's some good in it. You can find some good in it. It's just it's it's just like if you're expecting an all-out action movie, just rent it and if you get like the angle, watch. You guys like it. Fine. Buy it. Me, I was very disappointed. I expected a lot more. Just if there's ever, if I ever see a sequel or anything, don't make this mistake. Don't make this mistake. Literally. Don't make this mistake again. It wasn't worth it. It just... It's just the risks that this film take weren't needed. And that brings this to a disappointing 4 out of 10. And believe me, I hate the fact that I have to give this a 4 out of 10. 
And in an era where pretty much Marvel movies are pretty much um, trying to be different and really offer something, it's nice to see something do, done differently, and it's nice to see it done in a way where it's not like the usual Marvel films we're getting. But this is not the way to do it. Don't oversaturate it in this drama or social commentary that Ang Lee did. And I keep going back to that because that's the biggest problem with this film. It has no friggin' idea what it wants to be. And if it had, and it maybe. Maybe if they went with the other script, maybe it would have been better. But we have this. Again, I don't hate this movie. I really don't. And I keep saying that because I sound like I'm coming off like a broken record. I sound like I hate the movie. But I just really think that this film could have been so much better. But, yeah. Maybe I'd watch it again in the future. Maybe it'd grow on me. But for now, I really, really don't like it. But that is my review for Ang Lee's The Hulk. And next time I'm going to do a review on Point Break. I'm finally going to get to review that film. And also I'm going to do a review on Terminator 3, Rise of the Machine. Tell you guys what I think of that when I see it. But anyway, I'll see you guys later. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of Ang Lee's The Hulk. And be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.